Okay, hello all. Um, you'll see that my title is subtly different from the one that I thought of a few months ago. Um, this is just to stress that my comments are, are my own regarding Gloucestershire. I haven't uh, done a survey of the entirety of Algeo, um, and as you're probably all aware, individual local authorities are, are very different from each other. Um, as a bit of background, I currently manage the heritage team at Gloucestershire County Council. And in this regard, we co-host the Farms of Oven, so who covers Gloucestershire and what used to be Oven, um, who we share with Bristol Museum. Uh, I won't be giving outside locations to send everyone else for obvious reasons. Down, is it? Mm. This. We've seen this one before. Um, now, what I'm going to do is... Um, list the various problems that I see from my own perspective. Um, some of the answers might have already been raised earlier in the day, um, but I'm going to start off with the, with the positives. Um, we've got good responsible detectorists definitely working in our area. There are several groups, many individuals who follow the past code of conduct, consistently record their fines, who, who add to the sum of archaeological knowledge, even if not always in accordance with CFO standards and guidance. Um, if you need to know more, we've covered that the subject of uh, good research today to a certain extent and the past conferences, which Michael didn't mention. Um, they're an excellent way of finding out about the good research and I can uh, recommend them. Uh, to continue with the positives, um, as of 16th of April last week, there were 23,233 fines recorded from Gloucestershire on the past database. Um, I thought it was interesting that 72% of those fines are recorded from metal detecting. Um, that's much lower than I would have guessed. Um, the other figures probably merit further investigation, but um, I guess most fines from archaeological investigations aren't reported to the past. Therefore, I'm slightly surprised that 17.5% are recorded from field walking. We do, however, have issues with passing HER compatibility. Um, we only record treasure finds as HER monument records, but we haven't to date fully incorporated past data into the HER. Uh, for that reason, in our area, production of desk based assessments should ideally include a, check, a check of the past database as well as the HER, although this isn't specifically mentioned in the current standard and guidance, and maybe it should be. Uh, pass information is available as a point data layer on our GIS so that we can check it for planning and research purposes. And I understand that the PASS HER working group are aiming to create a live feed for PASS data into HER GIS systems in the future. Uh, the accuracy of locations provided by Detectorist remains the main issue for our HER staff. The slide here indicates the accuracy of the references recorded on the PASS database. Anything less than eight figure grid reference is a limited use for most of the purposes for which HERs are intended. Uh, the distances are in brackets and in red as I added them, and I didn't want to uh, blame Pass if I got them wrong. But on that basis, slightly over half the fines aren't located closely enough to feed into planning considerations. There's also thought to be a possibility that the detectorists can be secretive or maybe sometimes even deliberately misleading about locations to protect what they see as their patch. Uh, they were as aware of my quotes as we are. As an example, this slide shows a site in the Cotswolds where numerous Viking finds have been reported to the flow. A local archaeologist with a specific interest in the period undertook a geophysical survey you can see here, followed up by a series of training excavations that indicated that all the features were related to a typical late Roman farming establishment. There was no evidence for anything post Roman the origin of the Viking finds remain a mystery, but we have to suspect that they came from somewhere other than where they were reported. Another issue with um, joined up pass and HR working, of course, is that many flows are based in museums and may not have HR access. In the case of our own flow, he has access to our HR on the two days he works in our office, but he also covers four other unitary HRs, and he simply doesn't have the time to routinely engage with all of them. Uh, the single largest consumer of our time and finances in relation to metal detecting is the expectation that we'll be willing and able to arrange emergency rescue excavations 
to investigate the archaeological context of particularly significant finds, such as these from the Forest of Dean. This is becoming less and less achievable. Even relatively well-resourced local authorities, such as Gloucestershire, where provision has been retained for planning and countryside stewardship advice and for an up-to-date HR, have had budgets and staffing reduced to the extent there is no leeway for other activities that our councillors and senior managers may not see as core council business. Uh, as a rapid case study to, uh, on this subject, the picture on the left indicates a typical scene of a hole in a field dug by a friendly detectorist who does report his finds, and one of the several objects that he retrieved, presumably with the unpleasant saw edge shovel, uh, from the hole. Early to mid Saxon burials are still very rare in this part of the world, and we felt we had to act to investigate and prevent further potential damage from night hawks. And I think that the decision could be justified on the basis of the results. Here we have two of our former field unit team attempting to establish that we did actually have a Saxon burial. You'll notice that they're digging two trenches. The detectors couldn't remember precisely which of the very many holes around the field would produce the sort of thought fit them. This is a recurring issue in these uh, cases, I think. Once we've established which was the correct trench, um, you can see the results hopefully on this plan. Human bone is yellow, um, and I'm informed that the burial is one of very few pre adolescent burials with full warrior gear from England. You might know better. Um, it's provisionally dated to the late 5th to 6th century by the Glasscombe Beaker, which is blue on the plan and shown in the photograph. And the grave also contained the rest of the sword, two spear ferrules shield boss and other iron fittings shown in brown here. The green fragments are what are left of a contemporary bronze cauldron um, and as we heard earlier most of this had been thrown into the hedge as of no interest before our arrival. Luckily it was mostly retrieved later. So what does this case study tell us in the context of today's session? We were lucky in this case we had experienced field archaeologists to hand. I'm not solely restricted to planning and HR work we were assisted by the presence of the conservator from Corinthian Museum, who lifted the fragmentary sword and packaged the files. We had our flow on site and generally available to run around organising things. The help fitting was gold plated, so the BM thankfully dealt with the files. And the landowner was interested and extremely helpful. And none of these are necessarily the case anywhere else or will be in the future. Furthermore, here, Natural England unexpectedly managed to find the funds for this geophysical survey to inform management under higher level stewardship. And the finds you've seen came from the uh, bottom right hand corner of the circular feature shown there. And lastly, um, Operation Nightingale, we're undertaking further research on the site later this year. So we were lucky. But I still had to find funds of over £5,000 for our involvement, excluding the flow and my time. I don't know the cost to Natural England, Caribbean Museum or the British Museum, but if you wanted a new assessment of the financial impact of this fund, you'd have to include all of those. And whoever paid for whatever element of the work, it's all public money. The other major issue I want to raise, an increase and an increasing one, is commercial metal detecting powers. The nature of metal detecting is changing. Activities have moved online, there are many new detectorists, and traditional clubs are often unable to accept more members, and both clubs and individuals are finding it harder to access land. Now, this may sound superficially sound a good thing. Indeed, Passan Algeo, as Michael said, are very keen to better inform landowners and farmers of their rights and the implications of allowing metal detecting, particularly rallies <coughs> on their land. Pass have updated their rules and guidance regarding rallies as a result of the problems caused. The downside of the new situation is that it's led to commercial organisations paying farmers to allow access and charging participants to attend. In some cases, metal detecting holidays are being organised so that metal detectors from nations with more restrictions than England and Wales are allowed to take part. <coughs> I should mention that farms in agri-environment schemes have restrictions on the nature of detecting that is allowed on land. Um, <clears throat> outside designated sites, this is usually the only way of preventing rallies. 
other than particular land ownership, such as the National Trust or local authority land where they have their own licensing systems. <coughs> um, this slide shows areas under environmental stewardship five years ago within the Opera at Badgenden, near Sirencester, and here the system worked. A rally was proposed, and we were able to inform Natural England that such activity wasn't appropriate, permission was withheld, and the rally never happened. However, a major failing of all stewardship schemes is that restrictions cease immediately on expiry of the agreement. There was a rally on a farm in the county last year where a stewardship scheme had recently ended. The site contained dense crop marks of an Iron Age or Roman settlement, recorded as a high significance shine site for many years. That's Natural England's own sub HGR. Um, but with no agreement in place, there was nothing we could do to prevent a rally on private land despite the lander having been paid to protect the environment of the area for the previous five years. This area has been subject to several commercial rallies. The site was not designated or in any agri-environment scheme. Even if it had been, nothing was recorded on the HER. It was an entirely new site to us. It came to the notice of the flow that repeated rallies were being organised and that huge numbers of Roman fines were being retrieved not reported. So this is the opposite of what we heard last time. These included fines that should have been reported as treasure. Uh, pictures of these were being posted on social media, but nothing was recorded with the PAS. Um, as with some previous examples in our area, the flow was able to raise funds for this geophysics via a grant from the Bristol and Gloucestershire Archaeological Society, which I haven't got time to describe, but it's both busy and interesting. And the rallies only ceased when the farmer tried to introduce certain restrictions and any other concern locals consequently received the usual online abuse. We we're attempting to investigate further and we've had a responsible detectorist on the site who sampled fields both where the rallies happened and the rally hasn't happened and it seems that metal fines have been entirely stripped clear from the areas where the rallies happened. Um, Well, my final point, I'm not sure if you can read it. Um, we've already heard about the Treasure Act review, uh, which ends on Tuesday. Um, and I suggest that if anybody does have the time to read it and respond to it, it is quite important. Um, I've just picked out three items from it. There's about 32 questions, I believe. Um, but for a C for audience, um, the inclusion of base metal, metal Roman artifacts in the definition of treasure may be of concern. Um, how many pairs of hobnail boots do you get from the Roman cemetery, for example? Um, but the possibility of major changes to the way we all operate is also raised for initial discussion. So I'll just read again and leave for the discussion afterwards the two points that uh, worried me the most. Uh, the introduction of a process similar to that in Scotland, whereby all archaeological objects become the property of the Crown and the introduction of a regulation as in Northern Ireland where archaeological digging of any sort is only allowed by permit. Now I'm assuming that includes discussion of digging by professional archaeologists as well as everyone else. So um, I think that's probably something for everybody to discuss. Thank you.